In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the different methods we have available to use from the jQuery UI core component. We can use these methods when creating our own widgets or when using widgets from the library. One thing we can do is give elements or widgets unique ID attributes using the unique ID method. This method is called on a jQuery object and doesn't take any arguments. It also returns the jQuery object it's called on, so it's safe for chaining. The generated ID has the prefix ui-id-. A remove unique ID method is also provided and should be used to remove the unique ID generated and applied by the unique ID method. Thanks to the prefix used when IDs are generated, the method will have no effect if called on an element that doesn't have an ID added by the unique ID method. In the working files, there's a file called uniqueid.html. It contains two paragraph elements, one has a class name and one has an ID. If we select both of these elements with jQuery and call the uniqueID method on them, only the first element in the set, which doesn't already have an ID, will get a unique ID generated and applied. The second one already has an ID and so is not modified. Let's just view this in a browser now. And if we open up the console and just inspect these elements, you'll see the first paragraph has the ID ui-id-1. If we call this method on a collection of more than one element, all elements in the set that don't already have an ID will be given a unique ID attribute. We can then call the remove unique ID method on the same collection, and only the first element will have its ID attribute removed. Let's go back to the browser now. And as you can see from the DOM Explorer, the first paragraph has had the ID attribute removed. Another method we can make use of is the zindex method. Like many other jQuery methods, this method can act as both a getter and a setter, depending on which parameters we pass when we invoke it. If we pass no parameters at all, it acts as a getter and returns the zindex of the selected elements. If we pass a numerical value to it, it acts as a setter and sets the value that we pass to it. In the working files, there's another file called zindex.html. Let's just open that file up now. Let's use the zindex with no parameters to get the zindex of the paragraph. And we'll just log that to the console. And now let's view this page in a browser. And we'll open up the console once again. And now we see that the number 10 has been written to the console, because that's the Z index that the paragraph has. If we call this method in getter mode on more than one element, it will return the Z index of just the first element in the set. Let's now change the code so that we pass a value to the method instead, then the element will get this value as its Z index. Let's go back to the browser now. And if we inspect the element in the DOM Explorer, we can see that the Z index has now been set to 100. In this case, the method returns the jQuery object that the method was called on instead of a number. So this method in setter mode is safe for chaining, but not in getter mode. If we call this method in setter mode on a collection of more than one element, all elements in the set will get the specified Z index. The last core method we can use is the scroll parent method. This method returns a jQuery object containing the nearest parent of the selected element that is scrollable. It can only be used on jQuery objects containing a single element. In the working files, there is a file called scrollparent.html. If we open that up and call the scrollparent method on the paragraph element, we should find that it logs the div element to the console. Let's take a look. So we're going to select the paragraph that is inside the div and call the scrollparent method on it. Once again, we'll log that to the console. And let's just view this page in a browser now. And if we open up the console one more time, we should find that this element here is a jQuery object and it represents the div. And as you can see, it does. In this lesson, we looked at the jQuery UI core methods that we can make use of to give or remove elements unique ID attributes, to get or set the Z index of elements, or to get the closest scrollable parent to a given element.